Reverend Mrs. Fisk, recently I've been attending, attempting to explain to my wife why Lutheran clergy do some of the things that they do. Since she comes from a non-denominational background, she is uncomfortable with certain aspects. Uh, specifically, I, I knew this, like when Kate was, uh, Frisbee was telling me this morning, like, She's reading this, and I've not seen this yet, and I'm like, I know exactly what she's going to be on Really? With. Oh, yeah. Um, always. Always. Oh, it's always the same it, from this group of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She is uncomfortable oh. with certain aspects, specifically the pastor saying, I forgive you your sins. Oh, interesting. That was something in my family. How can you forgive sins? Only God can forgive mm-hmm. sins. Her objection is this distinguishes the pastor as more esteemed than the laity, <laughs> placing improper importance on the role of the pastor. I've referenced John 20, um, you know, the, he who sin you forgive, they forgiven, you, who you retain, they are retained, uh, as the place in scripture where Christ commands his apostles to forgive sins. However, she does not recognize this as the true interpretation of the passage. She believes the aforementioned verses are Jesus' instructions to the apostles to teach the Christians to forgive, without mention of the pastor having a special role. Her belief being that the pastor should say, Jesus forgives you of your sins. So, when I say in the command, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you, like it means Jesus forgives you. Like It's just fancy Lutheran talk. <laughs> there, it means Jesus forgives you, but it means that Jesus forgives you by letting me forgive you. And so if I'm going to teach Christians to forgive each other so that you would forgive someone at home, and that is also Jesus forgiving then why can't I do that to you as a group since I'm like your father in the faith? Like, all I'm doing is exercising the power that we all have to forgive each other for you so you can believe it. So it's a strange thing to be like, I don't want forgiveness unless it comes from, like, my brother at home. Only then does it really count. Like, huh, weird. But I I really want to emphasize that absolution, as the pastor preaches it, is basically just preaching. Like, as the pastor does it, is, is preaching. It's like, if you imagine everything that I'm doing with a sermon, okay? <laughs> I am, I'm, in theory, rightly distinguishing law and gospel in order to build your faith through the promises of Christ. So take that 45-minute sermon and boil it down to one sentence. That's it. That's absolution. I boiled the gospel down to one sentence. I forgive you. Yeah. And it isn't just Jesus in the sky forgives you. Um, is that he's given this power to the church. Now, you can look at Matthew 16 and Matthew 18 and see how this power is very much given to the church, and in fact, he calls it the keys of the kingdom. Okay, um, This won't convince her either. Nothing will convince her because um, she has decided to believe that there is no power to forgive sins among men. So teaching Christians to forgive each other just in their personal forgiveness um, is not the same as being forgiven in the sight of God. For her, like psychological experience of this. Otherwise, why would you have a problem with someone doing for all of us what we do to each other all the time? Your argument is we're supposed to do this all the time. You're right. Why do you have a problem with one guy doing it for us as an example? Eh, Why? Here's my, this is my favorite answer to this, okay? Because, you know, how can you forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. You have to say Jesus forgives you. You can't say you forgive you. You know, that's what they said to Jesus. Huh? That's what they said to Jesus. So when you're quoting the Pharisees, oh dear, <laughs> I think you should be careful about where you stand, right? You know, Jesus saw their faith and said to the paralytic, "This is uh, Mark chapter two, son, your sins are forgiven you." And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, "Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God?" So Jesus, perceiving their spirit, said, "Why do you reason in your heart?" Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or arise, take your bed and walk. Well, so you may know the Son of Man can forgive sins. Hey, rise, take your bed and walk. He rose, he took his bed and walked. They all glorified God. We never saw anything like this. Now, here's the thing I I really think is important about this. I don't think Jesus saying, I forgive your sins to the man at that time was something other than what Hebrews believed to begin with. It's what the Old Testament teaches. That faith in God is the faith in the God who forgives sins. And when you come to that God, the priest should say to you, your sins are forgiven. In fact, this is the entire Levitical system is to do that. And they got to the point where they had rejected the forgiveness of sins because only God can do it. I mean, I'm reading a book about the history of uh, the first century, and like they had rejected teaching the Old Testament at that time in the rabbinical schools because they were afraid they might teach it wrong. Hmm. And so they only taught the oral tradition, 
which was created to protect the Old Testament from, from being removed. And they would, they would only comment on that because since there, it's like you, got, you built the wall to protect it and you're just going to talk about the wall now. And what happened again is then God shows up and they're like, who are you? And they can't recognize him, right? Because they, they'd rejected his word. They'd, they'd invalidated the, the, the word of God for the traditions of men. So I, I think just, and this isn't going to convince your wife. Um, no, I think what you said about like in the set and by the command, I think that's pretty that's, important like your argu- for her to just it's recognize, a non, it's a non-argument. oh, that's him saying Jesus says. Yeah. Jesus okay. says, I forgive you. Like literally, Jesus says, I forgive you. Like, yeah. I'm just actually here saying it. And I do also. You know, not not by my own. Because that's what she's asking for. She's like, can't he just say Jesus said? But and he's like, yeah, when you, when he you, does. When you find yourself making an argument that is the argument oh, yeah. the Pharisees <laughs> made against Jesus, you should just take a step back. Yeah. 